What's the partners? Hmm? So ready. So ready, okay. All right, I want to take this opportunity and welcome you in and thank you for joining us. We're here at the Greenville Campus House of Reconciliation. Those that are joining us from the Greenwood Campus and of course to our VC, our virtual campus, and to our global partners. We take this opportunity not to waste your time, but to share with you a word from the Lord. Have some things that are going to uh, be coming up that we will share uh, with you and going on uh, in the future. The topic we've been talking about is purpose over people. And the first phase of that is understanding uh, purpose over me and the challenges that we have in life. Our base scripture is coming from Proverbs 11 and 1 that talks about it's a false balance. And so we dealt with various conversations about being stuck, the challenges, many I presume that faking it means that you're making it. But we realized in Psalm 67, and I think it was stanza six, that it's very hard to put something artificial into the ground and expect for it to come up authentic. We have to realize our authentication with God. One of the challenges is understanding our purpose. So we've kind of been trying to get to the middle of the road. And when, the, when you get to the middle of the road, you have to come to a um, mindset what old ways have to pass and what new principles have to be installed. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what status of life that you have. We have to figure out in our minds and in our lives what's working and what's not working. And the choices that we make, whether we stay with what we have done or whether we find and implement new opportunities will determine what level of success that we will have in life. So when we look at that, we kind of came to the conclusion that many times we have an issue uh, with our own reality because our own reality really shows us who we are, where we are. Financially, you can think you're one place and in reality, when you check your banking accounts, you're in another place. Many people use the term, well, I make X amount of dollars an hour, but what people never do from the financial perspective is to take out all of the things that they take away from you. And that's what we make an hour. You can't make $60 an hour. And then by the time they take out all the different things, insurance and all those things, you're really making 32. And if you're living like you're making 60, you will never catch up. So this is why we use the term middle of the road. And many times when you or I are trying to implement and install new processes in our lives, which comes from developing, it doesn't happen overnight, developing a new attitude about what direction that you want your life to go in. Because sometimes where you are isn't where you're supposed to be and how you are living is not how you're supposed to live. So the easiest thing for any of us to do is to look at the term, well, this is life. It's not life. Life is about the choices and life is about are you disciplined enough to push your way through the, um, the challenges of life. So that now it's like any, it's like going into a forest and in that forest, there are things that happen to you. There are things that you learn. And when you come out, you should have another level of experience. That experience should keep you and I from making the same mistakes that we made before. The word that we talked about was sitting on a stinking, a sinking and stinking ship. Me versus me. If you don't jump, it'll drown you. And what I mean by that is. When we will not get in the middle of the road and look at the decisions that we need to make, what are the best practices? What are the things that work for me? What are the things have I researched and that I found that are good for me, that work with my body type? Because everything, you know, you learn the hard way. Everything doesn't work for everybody. Every over-the-counter prescription or every over-the-counter over um, supplement does not work for everybody. Everybody's body to some degree functions a little different. There's four, type, four types of blood type. So then an individual has something that may work for A, but not work for B. So what happens is me versus me, the old me versus the new me that I'm trying to develop. And the kind of a way to say this is being a caterpillar 
but having the opportunity and the potential to be a butterfly. The choice is yours every day. And so what we do is we get trapped into an event. And, and, and I'm not against events, so please don't get that wrong. But sometimes events take away the reality in which we live in. And we spend so much time preparing for the holidays. Right now, we've just passed Thanksgiving. We're headed to Christmas. We're headed to New Year's. Average person is going to be off seven, eight days. And so we make things about events. And the reality is what happens when you have to come back to real life? What happens when you have to come back to the everyday work process or developing process or serving process? What happens then? So the question should be, should I stay in reality or should I just hallucinate? Because this is where illusions, uh, this is where hallucinations this is where imagination and hypothetical thinking comes in. So then what happens when you and I in the middle of the road, it creates a conflict between my now and my future. My now is comfortable, but my future is uncomfortable because what's inside of me has an issue with what's happening on the outside of me. My purpose have an issue with my present mindset. My purpose should be telling me you should be doing this. You should go ahead and prepare for this. You should go ahead and prepare for this because how it happens for the majority of people is they want to wait till the opportunity comes and then they want to go get prepared. So this is why we're talking about uh, being in the middle of the road, a divided mind. And so there's a, a parable in the Bible in the New Testament that talks about five wise virgins and five foolish. We're in the middle of the road. We have had a tough time from the latter clause of 2019, pretty much all of 2020, and pretty much almost full of 2021. So when... So when the pandemic is no longer an excuse, where will you be? When the pandemic ceases, the viruses, and we're not having to wear masks and do all this stuff that we're having to do, when it clears up a little bit in your life, because now many people are using the pandemic and you know, for the vaccination, against the vaccination, don't know what I want to do. So it's kind of like you've got multiple choices. But when the excuses are taken away, what then? The decisions and the decisions we make now, the behaviors we have now are the behaviors if we're not careful will be in the middle of 2022. We can't wait for a date to start the journey because in that in the middle of the road at some point we have to learn new practices we have to learn how to approach new things the old mindset we can't approach it that way the way we handle our finances we can't handle them that way the attitudes that we use to get this or get that or stay away from that or to move away from this we can't use those going forward old things will not work in a new place so we have to look at this phase of life we have to stop patching our lives we have to stop thinking someone else is responsible for our life we have to now in the middle of December, which is considered the number 12 spiritual numerically, it means order, governmental order. What structures, what infrastructure that we're going to use. And one of the greatest challenges for everybody is losing a present or a past behavior. And behaviors are stimulated by what's going on when we call it, it's the voices in my head. 
Because we can be motivated for a moment. And it's one thing to be motivated, but it's another thing to be dedicated. Many people can get motivated for the moment, but the real challenge is, are we dedicated to building a better version of ourselves? Are we interested in pulling ourselves together and putting in new practices and quit using old excuses? Because the Bible says in, the, in Proverbs 11, uh, 11 and 1, a false abomination uh, a false balance is an abomination under God. God does not choose for you and I to be off balance. The tests that you and I are going through, they, they are meant to develop us, not trappers. The struggles that you're going through, whether you're at the Greenwood campus, the Greenville campus, a part of the VC campus, a virtual campus, what you are dealing with isn't designed by God to destroy you. But here's the challenge. If we do not learn the spiritual lesson and grow spiritually and look for spiritual insight and develop spiritual foresight, Every test and every bump in our road, the adversary will tell us God's against you. And the reason he'll tell you and I that is because we all have challenges. We all have things we have to overcome. We all have behaviors that we've got to be better at. So then he takes the negative part of us to neutralize the energy for us to progress and to change. So then when you're trying to grow, you're trying to develop, you're trying to get to a, a new place in your life, then the voice is in our head that says, you're not ready for that. You don't really want to do that. So it's not a fact. And I had a conversation with several uh, people and they were saying, well, you know, you know, I just need motivation. I just need motivation. Motivation is wonderful. But dedication is key. Are we and dedicated and committed? Are you dedicated and committed to stick to the plan that works? And here's the secret. We've all done something that has worked. The challenge is we didn't continue to do it. Because we didn't realize in itself the plan has to stay the, the focal point, which leads us into purpose. What happens is, it's all the other little things that happen in our lives. It's all of our friends that we got to stop what we're doing to put on a fireman's helmet to go rescue a friend. We got to stop what we're doing. If we were saving $30 a week, we got to not save 30 because we've got to bail out our brother. We got to bail out our sister. The question becomes, and you have to ask yourself, what would they do without you? And I'm going to say this to you while we're in the middle of the road and in a divided mind. It's okay for them to find another source outside of you. I'm going to give us a moment and I'm going to just spin around on that one. I'm going to spin around on that one because I, feel, I felt that one come. Come. Because sometimes when you or I in the middle of the road, we are rescuing people who never really plan to be rescued. And we become unattached to our purpose. Especially if you have limited resources. So we're saving other people and we're not preparing and developing ourselves. Because I'm going to share this with you. No one else is going to be able to take the test that's designed for you. If you have to have surgery, as I know some of us have and had to re no one can take your rehab. No one can take your rehabilitation. 
but people can stifle your opportunity. People can hinder and distract you because of being in the middle of the road, being motivated, but not committed and dedicated to building a better you. And then at some point in your life and in my life, we get to a point and we say, wow, why am I here? Or why am I still here? Why, why, why? And this is how we get stuck. Because sometimes you give away the seeds and you didn't have enough seeds but for you. Had you given your time to your purpose, had we given our time to sharpening our skills, had we given our time to staying committed to the vow that we would made, had we given our time to be dedicated to finish, because what we don't see is these same people, these same issues will be going on without you. This is a time, people of God, brothers and sisters, it doesn't mean don't help your brother because the Lord told us to help people. But here's the issue. We need to learn the difference between helping and carrying. And we need to learn the difference between carrying and and being responsible for someone else. Do we need another moment? Do we do we need another moment? I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna give y'all just one more moment. Just one more moment. I'm gonna turn to look out this way, you know. Just one more moment. Cause I know somebody feel like, man, he talking about me. I don't know you. But what I'm speaking to is to the gift and the talent that God has given you. And God gets offended when you're more interested in helping, caring, carrying other people and not focus on preparation, commitment, and dedication to be the best version of of you there's a there's a thought that says if you don't learn from history you will repeat it what does that mean some of the people mother some of the people young people that you have helped if you check their history they need help all the time And sometimes you can lose yourself and being in events and being the hero for other people and not being committed and dedicated to your future. You have to. 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022 can't be like this for, for everybody. We, we cannot... Come out of the first quarter of 2022 still living our lives in broken pieces. Yes. Yes. And it start with the voices in our head. Because many times what you're supposed to be in God is not what you want to be in life. Do y'all need a moment again? We got about four minutes. Do y'all need another moment? Because yeah, y'all not looking well right now. You all are supposed to be the fresh group, lively and energetic. And, and I guess this is making you think and challenging you. And it, it, is it squeezing you? Is it, is it you know, is it kind of, is the seat getting a little, and because what's important 
And, and I said this uh, on a broadcast the other day. And I'm trying to get it right. There's, everybody has a past. And here's the thing I want to tell you about the past. There's nothing in the past that you or I can fix. Sixty-five to seventy percent of your energy is trying to fix a person that's still living in an illusion. He's gonna take care of this. She's gonna take care of that. Well, and, and parents, parents are guilty of this. They're covering for their children and their children are grown and you're still treating them like the eight and nine. You're still treating a grown person like you're putting him or her in the back seat of the car in a baby seat and you're protecting them. But yet they're living like an adult and functioning like an adult. So you have your own issues. Now you have their issues and you're trying to rescue them and you wonder why you're not able to get your life going in the direction that is supposed to be. Is that making sense? Because here's the thing about your past. Your past make you feel guilty. Because either you knew better then or you know better now. But let me say it very plainly. You nor I can do anything about the past. Say that with me. You or I can't do. So let's, let's ask this question. Then why are you still hanging on to it? Why are you still allowing it to beat you up? Why do you still feel as though you owe people? You wasn't the best brother. You wasn't the best sister. You wasn't the best parent. You were not at your best. So here's the thing. Why do you owe something that no longer exists in your present? Why? Why are you still indebted to the broken you? Because you haven't forgiven yourself. You haven't forgiven others that who influence you or enable you to become broken pieces. You stop. Here is the beginning of it. I'm going to give you this because I can see the minds and the wheels working. Then what does your past owe you? And what do you owe your past? Versus what do you owe your future? And what do you owe to the gift that God has given you? Because here's what happens when your past and people can still control your mind. You cannot find your purpose. Now I'm going to give you this. And we're going to head to the closing. If you cannot do anything about what was, I want you all to say this with me. Then why? Come on, you got to be a little bit stronger than that. Or are you still living in it? What can your past? add to you today who do you still owe mentally 
because you failed. You wasn't there. You were not at your best. But yet, you're still carrying the guilt. Son, daughter, mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, brother, sister, you're still carrying the guilt. You still feel like you let somebody down. But many of the people that you feel this way about, they couldn't raise the umbrella to let themselves up either. They've moved on, but you haven't. They've forgotten, but you haven't. You wish some of them have gone on hopefully to see the Lord. You wish that I could go back and tell. You can't go back and tell him. You can't go back and tell dad. You can't go back and tell mom. You can't go back and tell your brother. You can't go back and tell your friend. You, you can't go back and tell yourself. You can't tell your former self anything. This is a time in your life that you're going to have to start using your energy in your today. Don't try to wait till tomorrow to start building the best virgin version of you. Start today. Because many people are trapped because they're still thinking and believing that they can fix, correct, or make peace with their past. And it's literally still an energy and fuel and batteries out of your creativity and out of your mind because you still think you owe somebody. And for those of you who are watching the broadcast early this morning and will be watching later, it's time now to ask God to help you build the better version of you for 2022. Don't wait until 1130 on December the 31st, 2021, and think you're going to wake up on 2022 and be the best version of you. You will have the emotions to do it. And you will have the motivation to do it. But motivation is not credible without commitment and dedication. You have to get dedicated to you first. You have to heal. You have to establish yourself and get comfortable with being uncomfortable in God in growing. Because one of the things that happen, God will start removing you from your comfort zone. And you and I will feel very uncomfortable. And what I want to give you is know that you're going from a caterpillar until the transitional stage of your life and you're going to be uncomfortable with you and people are going to be uncomfortable with you and your association is going to be uncomfortable with you and it'll make you ultra sensitive your attitude will be on a high because when your attitude is on a high your insecurities are on a high and your left as your your self-esteem is on a low you're headed in the transition and there's fear and anxiety when you head into something. And these are two things that you and I have to have. Trust God. Trust the process. And believe 
that you're in his security. Trust God. Trust the process. And believe in his security. What is his security? It's simple. I'll never leave you or forsake you. But what I will do is quit carrying you and wait for you to get up and acknowledge who you are. Because your identity would not all your identity has never been being under the foot of others. And your identity, and let me say this to you, quit allowing people to declassify you and quit allowing yourself to declassify you. Nowhere in the 39 books of the Old Testament and the 27 of the New, God has ever told you to hang your head. When you mess up, don't act like you to mess up. You messed up. God says, clean up. Get up and keep going. Yes, acknowledge it. I wasn't a good person on Thursday. I wasn't a good person on Friday. I wasn't a good mom then. I did not know. I wasn't seasoned. I had issues with myself. Own it. And then let it go. And you don't have to pray for cars and money and spouses and boyfriends and girlfriends. No, 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 no. Let me give you one simple prayer that will wipe out all of that. Poverty. Oh, I'm going to spend this whole month on poverty. No, no, no. Oh, I'm praying that Lord help me get myself together. No, 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 no. Don't pray that prayer. Here's a simple prayer. Lord, each and every day. Help me be the best version of me. Lord, every day. You don't have to tell him you broke. He already know you broke. You don't have to tell him that you, you, you don't know if you're going to have your mortgage. He already know you ain't going to have your mortgage or your rent. Okay? But if you ask God to help you every day, now you get the total spectrum in the psalm of God's guardians. Because what he's going to do is he's going to pinch you. It's called a dummy bell. He's going to pinch you. He's like, what, what is wrong? What, what because that's a warning sign. You're headed in the wrong direction. The problem is your feelings and emotions and attitude will overrule the dummy bell. Then you ask God, why did it happen? And if you were to calm down and think a moment, you would have found out that God says, I tried to warn you. But you ignored my warning. This is a time for you and I and to those that are want to be believers and grow in Christ. We got to get back balance. We got to quit living in a place that we're no longer at. Because here's what most people are guilty of. You found an identity to hide in. Now you need to find the identity to flourish. That attitude, that behavior, that lack of focus, being undisciplined, going off on people, flipping on people, ignoring people. That's your secret cloth to hide. Being vain, arrogant, that's insecurity. When you are secure, you don't need all that. Because God said, when I made you, you were wonderfully made. Quit trying to be perfect and focus on being better. Day by day. 
pray that simple prayer. Lord, help me be the best version of me today. Let your word buffer me that I no longer get entangled with the yoke of bondage. I no longer live in brokenness. I no longer am a victim of my own past. But what I am is an overcomer. What I want to be is a person that can think and live forward. I hope today that something has been said to help you see you and that there's a better version of you waiting to be discovered. God bless you. I'll see you soon.